Greetings everybody, welcome to Exodus Lab. This channel is about valve radio restoration, but specifically it's for beginners, all people contemplating getting into this hobby, and it's presented by me. And I am a beginner in this. I've been at it for about 12 months. I've had um, a lot of successes with the number of radios that I've restored, and I thought, you know, it'd be worthwhile if somebody could put a show on and just show in a very simple, straightforward way um, how you go about restoring valve radios. Look, I hope to do that. I certainly don't have all the answers. There's massive gaps in my knowledge about how valve radios work and the components as well. But still, you've got to start somewhere. And as I've said to people in my areas of expertise, um, when we start something, we have zero knowledge and we learn as we go along, we make mistakes and hopefully we learn by those mistakes. So I'm going to jump straight into it and uh, show you our first project. Just bring the camera around. And I'll zoom out. Right, here we have uh, 1955, roughly, <clears throat> um, HMV Little Nipper. Oh, it's actually not a little nipper, it's a nippergram, because um, it is a radiogram. Um, I received a chassis well, a couple of weeks ago. I haven't touched it. The condition it's in now is the condition you see that I received it in. Um, I was going to scrap it, actually, for parts, as I have two other Nippogram chassis. Um, but when I looked at it closely, hey, it's all complete. And um, why should I scrap a, <coughs> excuse me, a radio that's um, probably serviceable? So let's have a look at it. As you can see, dial, dial face is all complete. It's just plastic. That's okay. Knobs are all there. They look original. Yeah, dial string needs re redoing. Um, bring it across. All the, the valves are there. Tuner works. Everything looks good. Let's have a look inside. And um, it looks all original. Oh, I've never seen pink antenna coils. Oh well. Um, <coughs> I don't think it's been touched. Not 100% sure, although a couple of resistors look a bit more modern than the uh, other ones. Um, I've got this red plastic capacitor. I'm not sure if that's um, 1955 or it could be 60s. Again, really not sure. Um, what else we got? Oh well, the uh, power cable has been snipped. So what I'm going to do is attach a temporary power cable onto this and it's going to be straightforward. As you can see, this, there is an on-off switch to this down here. Uh, this cable goes to the on-off switch, so that's our active. And this wire here <coughs> will be the neutral and it goes to a a terminal here which will feed or be the outward feed of the um, power supply I, sh I should expect. Anyway I'll just attach a quickly attach a power lead to that and come back. Okay the power lead has been connected uh, it's just temporary um, and that's nice and safe. Um, first thing I'm going to do is determine does the power supply work. No point in changing any capacitors if this thing isn't pumping out uh, through different types of voltages. So the first voltage, and I find the easiest to look for, is the uh, 6.3 volts to go to the uh, dial globes. So for that, grab my multimeter and attach my black, black lead to the chassis. Hopefully I'm getting a good ground on that. Positive will go on to the positive or the active 
of the dial globe and I have plugged it into my current limiter I'll show you all these things after um, and it's been power has been supplied from the Variac so I'm going to turn the Variac up and what I want to see is the multimeter increase in voltage so I've got this multimeter set to AC voltage and here we go just give it some power and we're getting we're getting power so that's all I need to test on that 6.3 volts is fine power supplies off, Variax off and one thing I never do is, I try not to do I don't touch the chassis with power on I uh, don't like getting zapped no, I'm sure I'll turn this around the other way so we were su successful with uh, 6.3 volts this power going to the, um, the dial globes um, next point I'm going to test is the um, rectifier valve uh, this is a 6x4 7 pin valve and I'm going to see if it's getting high voltage from the um, power supply and then to see if it's getting filament voltage for the heater so I have here a little diagram of the pinouts for the 6x4 and I see that plate 1 and plate 6 plate sorry <laughs> pin 1 and pin 6 of the plates no connection on 2 the heater is on 3 and 4 5 has no connection and 7 is the cathode so I'm going to go to plate number 1 first plate or the second plate sorry on pin number 1 and I expect to see some high voltage coming through that so between pin 1 and 7 there is a, a gap and we count clockwise from the gap one two three four five six seven so all I have to do is count clockwise and I'm just looking for pin number one I'm not sure you'll be able to see it and in fact I need to have a good look in there and lo and behold that appears to be pin one and the black lead again to the chassis we reference all voltages, virtually I think all voltages, um, to the chassis. So, bring a multimeter across, should be receiving AC voltage. If not, we'll change it to DC, but this, I'll power up the Variac, and give it a bit, bit of power. And there you go, absolutely nothing. Let's have a look here on DC. If I turn it on, then power will flow through. So back to AC. And we're getting voltage, so that's nice. Now we'll go to the heater. And again, I've just turned all the power off. And that's pin number three or pin number four. Look at count. One, two, three, four. No, I'll go on pin three. Power on. Give it some volts. And up she goes. So, that test tells, tells me that the uh, power supply is uh, spitting out three different voltages. Um, so, I think we're good to go. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do since I've determined that power is going through the system is to change where's my pointer gone disappeared okay is to change the main filter caps and in this case there it is there the big gray thing um, it's two capacitors in one 224 microfarads um, at some sort of voltage rating 400 300 volts 400 volts um, that's the one 
that can cause most problems. And if I'm really lucky, uh, once I replace those uh, with new ones, um, the radio might even work. Who knows? But we'll find out. But that's certainly got to come out now. That's probably leaking. Uh, it's, what, 66 years old, this radio. And if that's the original cap, yep, bad news. We'll stress out the transformer. Um, if it's leaking, introduce hum into the circuit. Um, so it's got to go. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so here's our filter cap, or dual filter cap. And um, I've taken a photo of it. I always do that. Whatever component I'm going to change, I'll take a photo so I can see where the connection goes. Because if I get once I cut it out and I get sidetracked, um, and I come back to it and I go, mm, where did it go again? Um, the other thing that I do do, I get my red part, uh, felt pen and I just mark the two connection points for the caps. And that's the positive end. On that. Negative end of the cap. This being electrolytic, it is polarized. Uh, negative end um, goes to the chassis, so that's earthed. So, I have two replacement caps here, brand new, 24 microfarads each. Oh, and I will show you just one thing. Again, if you're brand new to this, um, is to discharge your capacitors. So, I'll show this to you if you can see it. What I have, it's simply two resistors joined in series, one after the other, and a couple of that alligator clips coming off each end. And the resistors in there, uh, they add up to 920 ohms at, at 5 watts each. So all I have to do is attach one end there, one end to earth for the chassis, And that will discharge the capacitor. Well, one of them in there anyway. And we just do the same. That should be long enough. Do the same with the other. And that should be okay. If you're still, say, not sure about it, turn your multimeter on. and set it to voltage, put your negative black cable on the chassis and positive on one of the terminals and I'll just bring it around. Where are we here? There we are. So it's 140, oh, well the millivolts, they're rising. It's in millivolts. I'll just check the other one. five millivolts so safe enough let's cut it out now I'm going to leave some lead on it because I'm probably going to just hmm where's that oh there we are right Oh, there it is, out it comes. So what I normally do, I will leave some wires there, especially on the earth, that's been, um, that, the earth wire's been soldered to the chassis. Oh, I'm not gonna bring out the big soldering iron just for that job, so I'll just hook into that wire and I'll connect my um, new capacitors onto there, as long as Remember, capacitor is polarised, electrolytics. There's your negative marking, there's our negative terminal there, that's our positive terminal, and we also know it's positive by the little indent around the top of the cap. So, got to get it right. If you switch it around, well, the capacitor could go bang. And apparently they make a huge mess. So, um, let's get it in. 
I've watched a number of shows on YouTube and particularly like this method which is simply create a J hook do the same here let's try and get a feel for the length that'll that should be okay so another J hook Put it in there, squeeze them both together, terrible at doing this, they always twist on me. And that will hold. And as um, one of the shows I, I watch religiously is um, on electronics is D-Lab, uh, hosted by Terry Dayton, um, and this is where I got this particular technique from, and he's right, it creates a mechanical join, and the solder, which isn't very hard at all, it's quite soft, just is the glue that holds it all together. And I'll just solder it up, and that's running, that's good. That looks okay. Take a second capacitor. Try and make it as neat a job as I can. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing, but sometimes it's difficult. I'm sitting to the side of the uh, the unit and the camera. And let's put a hook. I'll get it right. Hook on that gently, gently, gently. Put that in there. Yeah, crimp it. Crimp that. Normally, I'd also put some. Um, shrink tube on there but there's actually nothing at all that can touch touch the uh, positive ends right for the negative side I don't know if you can see I've got the two wires coming out of the caps now all we have to do is join them I'll just do that probably out of camera All right, so I've, um, I've twisted both the negative uh, terminals of the capacitors together. I'll just solder them up. I'm hoping you can see this. And that's good. That'll hold. Don't need... Ouch, that's hot. <laughs> Don't need that. Just let that cool down a bit. Here's the earth wire, the original earth wire there. And matter of hmm. Do a try and do a reasonably neat job. Twist it up. And crimp. No. Tee <laughs> Got that wrong. Now, well. Live and learn. Get into that and just lift that up a bit. There we go. Hmm. 
waiting for it to solder to run. And there it goes. So they're installed. And that was done in pretty much real time. Um, I must admit, when the first time I did it, it probably took me a fair 20 minutes to do. Uh, just very, very nervous in doing it, wondering, oh, you know, have I got it right? Um, but, you know, keep doing it, get, they get easier. And that looks okay, so I'm just double checking, making sure that, yep, positives are going to those two terminals. Right. We're going to now power it up, see if we get smoke um, or stations or nothing. Um, what I'll do, I need to connect speaker and an aerial, so I'll do that. I have the speaker wires here. And I can verify that by just checking that, yeah, they're coming from the output transformer. Um, we have our aerial and earth wires here, and that's pretty much it, really. So I do have a speaker, which <laughs> I should put these closer to hand, actually. speaker up. In um, the case of a single speaker, well, it doesn't really matter which terminal goes where. Um, the speaker will start, the diaphragm will start moving in and out and uh, it may either push out or pull in either way. It, it'll still work it's when we've got two speakers connected together that you want them in phase. Um, white wire I know is the aerial wire and um, I'll just find that, it's fallen down. Okay, I managed to find my aerial wire. So that's connected now. So speaker's connected, aerial's on. Um, it's all plugged in, but no power. And it's time for that first test. So with brand new capacitors in there, build, bring the power up slowly. Um, as has been said, don't shock them. I'm also looking at my current limiter, making sure that it's not glowing. So I reckon I'm at, I don't know, 100 volts. And so far, no smoke. Good sign. Now I'm at 250 volts. So the, uh, one of the dial globes is working. And here's the hard bit. Let's try it. I'm just turning the uh, tuning capacitor by hand. Nothing. Ah, but I'm getting crackling on the volume, so that's promising. Okay, I was hoping this would work straight off. Never mind. At least, as I said, the, there's crackling sound in it, so um, the circuit works. Um, just got to determine now what's causing this, um, causing it to be quiet. It could be a valve, I'm not sure yet. It could be just simply a resistor. Uh, the possibly um, what they call the grid resistor uh, could be out of spec. So I'm going to now rearrange myself and um, start looking at some uh, values of resistors and when I find something I'll come back. Okay, I was looking for some um, out of spec uh, resistors. I did find one but then it occurred to me this is a radiogram and the uh, selector switch um, what was it set to? As it turned out, it was set to the uh, gramophone. Um, so I've given it a bit of a spray. It's not the greatest of switches. There's no definite um, 
definition between all three. It just seems to want to move around on its own. So I'm going to put it in the middle and we'll give another power up and see what happens. I should have remembered that, but uh, uh, hold on. Just turned it on there, bring the power up slowly. Give it some time to warm up. I think it's going to work. Yeah. Give it something anyway. I'm not sure if that's short wave or I'm going to manually turn the uh, tuning capacitor on. That's interesting. It worked. It's working. It's dead on either side, so if I get a short wave. That short wave. And just nothing in the middle in appearance. It gets louder as the uh, as I close the uh, the games. No stations yet. No. No, it's not the selector. I wouldn't think. Interesting to go, I got a short wave and I get absolutely no sound at all. Very strange. So I'll turn the light back on. At least we're getting a lot of static. Again, that's very promising. Um, I did find a resistor that is out of spec. And where is it? There it is down there. Now, that's either 47 or 48K, and it's currently reading at about 57. So it's uh, way out of tolerance. And it's attached to the uh, output tube, I think, which is a 6M5. Um, so I'm going to replace that with one of the, with the brand new at the correct value. So I'll get onto that. Okay, I've changed that resistor that was on the um, output valve. So it's now 47K. Um, that fought me a lot to get that in. Uh, but finally got there. So, as I like to do, um, once I change a component, I retest the unit. Um, I got cocky a few, several months back where I changed probably about three or four components. And um, I then tested it, and the radio didn't work. And it took me hours and hours to find the error. Um, so, yeah, it takes longer to do replace one test, replace one test. But if you've done it wrong, you've, you, you know which one has caused the problem. The last one you did. So let's power this up now. Let's see if we get anything. Come on, baby. Woohoo! <laughs> Not bad!
Was that it? Yeah, the tone control works too. Oh, that's great. Power that down. I always find if I can get them to at least work by changing just a, a couple of components, it raises my confidence levels to no end. Right, so I've snipped one end of the this capacitor off and I was able to um, read that it's a 0 0.022 microfarad and as is my want that's where it connected to and I've marked well, you can't see it actually so it joins onto just there and I've marked that little wire in red and I have my 0 0.022 replacement. What I'm going to do, and I'll show you what I do, is um, test this and find out which side is the foil end. So I'll just set that up. Right, now there are plenty of videos on uh, YouTube showing how to determine the foil end. Um, and we use, uh, and the best one I use, using a, um, a oscilloscope. So I have my terminals there connected. We can see that uh, nice straight line there. So I'll just take it off. You can't see it on camera, but there's a whole lot of interference happening now. So where are we? All I'm going to do is connect one end. Doesn't matter which. To the capacitor, the other end. If I can see it. I hold that and I'm looking at the waveform to see which is the, uh, the smallest wave. Um, and it's going crazy. So let's just flip it over and see what we get. That's even worse. Slow it down a bit. So there I am holding it. We've got it's fairly large curve. Let's put it to the other side, and that's definitely smaller. So we'll just double check again. Yep, pretty big. And that wave shows the lowest amplitude. So I now know that the wire that the black lead is connected to, that's our negative end. So what I'm going to do is just simply give it a little mark and that tells me that's negative. Oh sorry, I tend to use the terms positive and negative a bit too much I suppose. But that's our foil end there. So when I'm replacing capacitors and um, especially the waxies, because they, they do tell us which side is foil end, um, I want to make sure that the replacement capacitor is also oriented the correct way. Um, if we put it around the other way, that can introduce hum or inter interference or hum into the circuit, um, degrading our signal. So um, I spend the time to check each one and uh, determine the foil end. And I think it just produces a better job. The other thing I do on these new capacitors, I, know, I, I, I write what the value is. So should I ever come back to it, um, I know immediately that that's okay. Right, well that cap's been changed and I'm just about to test it. But um, <laughs> I found on the floor a ball bearing. 
and um, here's a uh, what do we call these things selector switch and um, as you can see I don't know if you can see it in there oh there it is little ball bearings um, are managed managed to get that ball bearing back into the selector switch and uh, now it actually clicks to a point anyway so I think I've got it on medium wave yeah let's power up and see if this is going to work again and I should turn it on I've actually gotten used to radios without on off switches I think they're a lot easier to deal with Again, no smoke, it's all good. Lots of buzzing. Still my short wave. Front station. Are you looking to catch up on the day's news but you're new to English? Well, that's good. Again, tedious work, I know, but you change one component and then you test and it works, that's good. You change it, doesn't work, again, you know you've made an error somewhere or <laughs> some other component has failed. But um, so far we're going good with this radio. Now, what I'm going to do with it um, is, again, I'll just start replacing components and I'll do a couple and then I'll come back. Okay, so works progressing. I, um, I changed that capacitor there, which is a 0.01 to. I um, also changed these two resistors. Uh, they're two 10Ks um, in parallel. Brings them down to, to 5K. So I replaced them with two brand new 10Ks. I just, well, I didn't measure it quite right it took a while for them to um, to actually come up to whatever their value was which was uh, a little bit over over 5k because uh, where you put two 5k sorry two 10k resistors in parallel and you halve the resistance uh, whereas with capacitors if you put two 10 microfarad capacitors in parallel you double the capacitance that so goes up to 20 microfarads so uh, a little bit of tidbit information that I learnt a long time ago. Um, let's run the test. See if I've done it correctly. Come on, baby. Yep. Right, I'll continue on. Um, if I just had a thought that um, people might like to see me change each and every one. Um, I, it's quite laborious, actually, and the video would be extremely long. Um, so... I thought, well, I'll at least show the uh, technique that I, that I use for changing the uh, filter capacitors. Um, and every other capacitor and resistor is exactly the same. I will leave a little bit of the existing lead, a wire, um, and then I just create little J-hooks on, on, on each end, crimp them together and solder them up. And I just work methodically through all the caps. And... Um, and run a test and I will do a couple and then come back. Right, so I've been working at changing some components and I may have mentioned that one before, a little 0 0.01 I think, that's um, 0 0.047 there and um, then I changed this one which was tucked in all under there and um, that proved difficult, that took me half an hour to um, take out, put in, 
And, um, oh yeah, just gotta take out that dead wire. So, um, rather than put the um, replacement 25 microfarad, well, actually, I put in a 24 because I don't have a 25 microfarad, and uh, it's a bit overrated for the job. That's 600 volts, and the original is only uh, 25 volts or 40, uh, yeah, 25 volts with a 40 volt surge. Um, but that's all I had left. That's all. I'm, sorry, that's all I I have on hand. So um, put that in. Ran a new wire. That's just that I've been able to work out. I think I'm correct. That is a coupling cap, and it, this one does filter out all the DC because that line there goes to the um, speaker, um, providing the. Uh, um, output transformer with a nice clean signal. So that's in, let's test it. Power on. Dial up the Variac. And let's hope it works. And power the unit on again, yes. I kept turning the switch off. Well again, no smoke, that's good. Oh yeah, I'll turn the fluoro light off. That might help. Just trying to tune it in manually. That's a bit best I can do. I'm using my uh, uh, chopstick because I, as I said, I don't like to touch a chassis when um, the, the unit's operating. Oh, I've been shocked a number of times, don't like it. The sound, no, this is a pretty crappy type of station that we get, poor reception. Um, the sound's getting slightly better, and should get better as I progress along and change all the caps. So, um, yeah, look, you might say, that, well, it's not the neatest job. No, it's not the neatest job, but there's not a lot of room in here. And I just thought, well, if I just mount it up against the chassis, put a cable tie on it, that'll hold it in place and it's not flopping around. Um, so, again, that will do. And so, like, we look at the chassis all the time, we're looking at the radio. Um, the next person who uh, fixes this will probably laugh his head off at my poor workmanship. But you know what? That's okay. I'm just a beginner, a beginner on this. So, um... I'm going to continue and come back. I'll change a couple more components and uh, we'll run another test. Okay, so here's where I currently am. There were three wax caps right there and they've all been replaced. Um, yeah, the black cap there and a couple of uh, poly caps um, at the right voltage too. Um, I think they're 400 volts, so I'm replacing them. I've replaced them with exactly the same um, voltage rating as the old caps um, and I've replaced three without testing it so let's try it and let's see what happens turn the power up I always run it off the Variac until it's completely finished and um, after that it's when I plug it into the mains Turn the light off. Well, that's good. So now I'll continue. There's just one more cap. I'll bring the camera up. And you can just see it there. One more wax cap left. I'll change that over and um, then I'll come back again. Well, the last capacitor has been changed and that one right there. Nothing to do with that yellow wire. Um, that was a toughie, again, cramped in there, not much space. So let's test it and make sure I haven't done anything wrong. Turn the power up on the Variac. Well, 
Wait for it to warm up. Yes. Yeah, the dual pattern of male leadership and male female partnership pervades all of Scripture, from creation to the fall huh. to redemption, the Christian to Christ, channel, and to the <laughs> final confirmation. All right. Well, let's. I think all the capacity is done. Um, although there could be one more up the top. <clears throat> Not sure. Oh yeah, yeah. This oh, lost it. Let me get try and get it back into focus. And just right here, near the power transformer, it's on the um, <clears throat> it's on the tone control. So we'll change that as well. And uh, that might improve the tone. Tone is currently working. But um, never mind, still, still change it. And I'll get onto that and come back. You know, I thought, well, why not? I'll, um, I showed, showed you how I um, changed the uh, first filter capacitors. And I thought, well, you know, might as well film the whole process of me changing the very last capacitor. So I managed to read it. It's at 0 0.0047. And... Um, Pretty simple, this one. Goes on the uh, first two lugs of the tone control. Third one is earthed to the um, body of the uh, pot. So, I have my replacement. I know which side's the foil side, which is on my right-hand side. So, snip it out. Where are you? There. And I'm going to have to just shorten my leads a little bit. I'm not sure how neat this is going to be, but uh, we'll get there. Just have to wake up my soldering iron. And I'll need my pliers. Nearly there with the iron. Actually, I'll just snip the um, ends off a little bit more. I'm finding that um, the more I do this, the neater I become. It's a little bit of a task though. Get that to go in. That's in. Needs a bit of solder to hold it in place. That looks good. We'll just cut. Second one off. As you saw, I just lift one end, replace it, and snip the other end off. And if I don't get sidetracked, I know exactly where it's got to go. Hmm. This will be interesting. I'm right handed and I'm going to have to grab the soldering on with my left hand. No doubt I'll shake around a bit. Just let's get it in there a little bit more. Yep. And a bit of solder. Hmm. 
Did it come out? No, no, it's in there. Okay. So, one other thing I generally do is I set my multimeter to a diode setting and I check my solder joints. So I want to see if there's continuity between what I've soldered and the circuit. Turn the speaker on. That one's okay. And the foil end. Get through the muck. Yep. So they're not dry joints. And uh, voltage will go through them. And I think it's time for another test. Uh, wires everywhere. Stuff everywhere. Oh, I make an absolute mess on the workbench. Uh, speakers are still connected, power's alright, nothing's come out, antenna's always connected. Fire up the Variac. Should be fine. I hope. Oh yeah. yeah. Not bad music at all. All right, so that's all the caps done. Um, the next job I'm going to do, and I'll probably continue that tomorrow, is um, going to be checking the values of all the um, old resistors and anything out of spec I'm going to replace and in fact what I keep saying is that why keep an old resistor that's as old as the set so we're looking at 60 about 65 years 66 years old um, only to have the thing fail possibly uh, two months later so yeah my view is just Replace them all. Hey everyone, um, time to do the resistors. <clears throat> so, as you remember, um, it's been a, <laughs> a day since um, I finished the caps. And we're looking at the resistors now and I'm going to just do some measurements. So, I'm going to start with this resistor there. He's quite easy to get to. And... Um, the colours on it, red, uh, it's, looks like violet and yellow. Um, I, I can't remember what the, uh, the coloured values are, so I go by my little chart here, uh, which I found on the net for old capacitors, and, uh, but the colours still work out. So red, violet, so red is 2, violet is 7, and we multiply that by 10,000, so that's 270K, 270K resistor. Uh, even if it was, if it's grey, well, it makes it 280K. So I think I'll go with the 270. Um, attach our probes, multimeter probes onto it. Have the settings on ohms. And, yeah, it doesn't want to stay. Okay, we'll get that. Here we go. And what have we got? Uh, 579k. Well, that's got to be changed. I'll just go get a resistor. I've got my resistor. Um, 270k. And what I like to do, I just check them, make sure it's uh, it is correct. We'll see how close it is to 270k. And 269.2, spot on. 
as you can see it's a pretty big one, it's a 3 watt uh, that's all I have in 270Ks and that's no problem talk about overkill um, it should last a long time so start by snipping sort of try and get a, an idea the length I need and again just grab a J hook crimp it together again always struggle with this no, you can't see anything probably but okay that's in Solder that up. I think that's all right. Uh, just a little bit more, I think. Okay. Let's get rid of the other end. Get this wire out of the way. Make some slight adjustments. Try and get that in. No. Yeah. So you probably will have a chuckle over this. That's okay. I'd be laughing if I was watching somebody do this as well. So, you know, I know how to do it better. But, you know. We'll get there. Guess what? We're there. Just patience, take your time. Again, I keep saying, probably not the neatest job in the world, but it's a solid connection. And that will hold again for the next 50 years. So, let's just do a test, see if there is any difference. With the radio or the sound quality. I'll just zoom out. Wait for the radio to warm up. Just turn the light off, get rid of the. Um, Interference so much as much as I can. Yeah, can't speak Chinese. Yeah, 
at the stations I'm on are notorious for bad reception. Um, pretty much everywhere. Hey, okay, you go on. You go on. Oh, right, that sounds that sounds good. That sounds okay, yeah. Um all right, I'm going to again start testing some more values. Um let's go with this one. So we've got uh yellow, violet, orange. So yellow is four, violet is seven, orange is ten thousand. So 47, 470k. What do we get out of it? 51k. So yellow, violet, orange. Check that again. Yellow is 4, violet is 7, orange, oh, pardon me, orange is 1000. So 47k. Uh, almost 52k, it's still in spec, just, but I'm going to change it. So I'll get a resistor and um, I'll make that change and then come back. Well, what I've done so far, I've um, taken out the 47k and well I've replaced it with a in intolerance 47k um, 47k um, terminates uh, with this resistor which is 2.2 meg and that read a little bit too high pretty much at the uh, the limit of 10% tolerance so um, I'm going to replace that as well and uh, I don't have a 2.2 meg resistor so what I've had to do is get uh, three resistors, two 1 megs and a 200k, join them up in series, and um, this thing gives about, well, just over 2.2k, a 2.2 meg, my, sorry, and I will get it in there. <laughs> I finally got them in. That was tight work. Uh, but they're there. Again, test time. Get the variac up and wait for it to warm up. One thing I've noticed about this set is that the um, volume's extremely loud. Um, I can't go out. Could be the speaker, but I'm not sure yet. I'll try a couple of other speakers later. Yeah. That's good. It works. Power off the... Put all the power off. Um, okay. I'm going to continue to test all the resistors and replace and might as well and I'll get back to you um, as I complete each step. Well I'm progressing nicely um, I've come to this resistor here um, which is uh, attached to a couple of uh, terminals on that particular valve I with that I haven't, haven't checked what um, pins it's connected to, but I suspect it's um, a grid cap. Um, colours tell me it should be 22k and oh, the current reading was 27k so well over the 10% tolerance level. Uh, these things I've found in the past uh, a couple of times are notorious um, where I've replaced pretty much everything except the grid cap and even though I'd replaced everything 
still wasn't working. I was getting no stations as soon as I changed the uh, that particular resistor. A grid resistor, not a grid cap, my apologies. Um, as soon as I changed that uh, resistor, bang, the radio came to life. I may have mentioned that yesterday, I'm not sure. Um, but that's well over, and that's definitely got to go. So I'll get on to that. Well, I've replaced the grid resistor, and um, I did do a test, and radio's working fine. Um, doesn't seem to be working any better or any worse. Um, there are two resistors left. Uh, this one down here is 10 meg, and I don't have any spare 10 megs, and I don't want to be... I just can't really, really can't be bothered uh, wrapping up a num number of uh, resistors in series just to make up 10 meg. That is actually spot on. So uh, in this case, I'm going to leave it in place. And if I do get some 10 meg resistors um, and I remember about this, I'll replace it. Anyway, it leaves us with just one more. And just the camera a bit, just right here. Um, goes between one of the IF cans and um, some sort of coil all wrapped up in wax. Now, looking at the colours, it's either orange, black, yellow or brown, black, yellow. So, orange, black, yellow is um, 300K. What? Let's measure this and see, is it... Close to 300k. Um, where's the camera? There. No, it's 117k. Alright, so if it's not orange, it's got to be brown, which is 1010k. Oh, sorry, 100k. And yes, it's going to be a 100k resistor. Um, so it's almost 20% out of tolerance. So that's got to go, and um, I'll replace that. Well, I've finally finished the resistors, and the last one has been replaced. And all that's left is, let's give it a test. Hopefully it's, the thing still works. Give it some power. Wait for it to warm up. No. Oh, yeah. That's good. And she'll be ineligible so uh, to run again. Um, but it'll be very actually, to actually. What does happen in 12 months time. Let's check I short lines. As I recall, there was absolutely nothing coming through. I'm not sure if that's just the uh, muck in the uh, selector switch. I'm not seeming to get anything. And that's not surprising. I rarely pick up short wave. I'm not sure. I'd say it's working just yeah, this is not uncommon. Anyway, I wonder what part replacement part brought that to life. Hmm, guess I'll never know. Anyway. There we go. Well, that's essentially done. Um, I can't think of anything else to do on it. Um, I'll see if I've got the schematic and um, attempt my first alignment. Um, that'll be cool. Haven't done one yet. But anyway, thanks for watching. 
the very first episode. Um, seemed a bit laborious to me. It was difficult to do with the camera. Um, I'm not sure if you get anything out of it. I'm not sure if anyone's going to even watch these things. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'll think about how I'll, I'll do this in the past. Certainly, I'm, all I'm doing is copying other videos that I've seen um, regarding restoration of point-to-point -point valve radios and valve amplifiers. Um, but I do want to show it, as I said, from the perspective of a beginner. So um, one thing I wanted to do when I started watching these videos was actually see the person replacing parts. And that is actually quite laborious and sometimes just difficult to be able to do and to film at the same time. So I understand why most of them just cut away and then show you, oh yeah, the parts have been replaced. Um, I guess I'm looking more at technique, how they do it. Um, if anyone watches this and that's what you want to see, just, yeah, let me know. Let me know down below in the comments. If you don't like it, hey, that's okay. Thumbs down. If you like it, thumbs up. All right, people. I hope for those of you that are thinking about doing it, I hope this has helped a little bit. Um, those that have uh, started just like me, you'll probably, you've seen it all, I'm sure. Um, but of course, when you're working on these, be safe. The voltages in there will kill you. Hence why I never, ever touch a chassis when the radio's got power running through it. <laughs> never. So I always put knobs on. And uh, I'm a good boy. I discharge capacitors before I touch them. Um, and that's what you should do. Have a nice, good, solid set of safety procedures. Do it every time. I can't say that more than enough. But anyway, thanks everyone. I'm rambling on. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Uh...